So I was at the bar uh, last night and one of my friends who happens to be a uh, conservative Republican, whatever. You know, I respect people's opinions, although I don't have to agree with them, although I can actually expose how flawed their logic might be. But it doesn't come down to logic anymore in many instances. I mean, last night we were talking about, I don't know what, about business. And somehow Obama came into the conversation. And it was me, my Republican friend, and a few other guys. And he told me, well, he asked me in a way, but he was mostly telling me that Obama is to blame for my business going bust. My previous business. I mean, like, does he even know why my business went down? Uh, well, maybe because, uh, I don't know. Home values went down. Uh, things were getting too expensive. And people didn't want to invest in my business anymore. I mean, I was caught right in the middle of everything. And for my friend to say, oh, he knew exactly what happened to my business. It was Obama. In fact, my business already go down the tubes 2008 before Obama went into the White House. Now, uh, it doesn't mean that Obama's off the hook. I'm not saying that. You know, I, my business hasn't been better uh, since he was in office. It's not like... Obama has written me a check, which he should, okay? <laughs> God, you know, I mean, all the things that I do for Obama, uh, you know, being in the gay media, you're going to have to uh, uh, write reports and do all these things, report on Obama. And I try to be balanced. Personally, I don't like Obama. I prefer somebody else in the White House. But then, if I don't like Obama, why do I want somebody that is 10 times worse than him? I mean, wh why would I want somebody like that? And then my friend, trying to be all nice, he says, Jose, I don't understand. How can you support Obama? Which I'm not, by the way, but he somehow assumes that I'm supporting him because I don't support a Romney. Uh, let me just give you a clear perception here to make it sound as though, uh, you know, so you can actually understand where I'm coming from. The majority of Americans, every person over the age of 18 who is eligible to vote is not going to vote for Romney. All right. A lot of people are, are going to stay home. A lot of people are not even registered to vote. A lot of people are registered to vote, but have no interest in voting. They don't, they don't give a shit. And those people, you know, they deserve what they get. And then you're going to have the people who are going to vote for Obama who are not going to vote for Romney. But you see, I don't fall within these categories. I just wanted to... Give the you know the the exact uh, perception, if you want to say, to my friend exactly of how I view things. No, the majority of the country is not saying let's have Romney in office. Let's have this Mormon bishop who is part of a religion that hates America. No, uh, the majority of the American people either don't care or don't want Romney in the office. Get that? But he's going off and off about my business like I asked him you know what to be honest with you I asked him my friend my Republican friend to invest in my business he said no I can't do that right now it's too tight blah, blah, blah. and now he's bitching and moaning that there's that there isn't any investment going on that that people don't invest in anymore because they lack confidence on Obama 
You know, that's the most stupidest excuse. Just because they, you, you have a, a black guy, I don't know if it's because of the race. I don't think it is. It's, it, I don't know what it is. Who cares about Obama? Just invest. Do, do something that will help the country. You don't need Romney. You don't need Obama. Uh, what you need is a leader, a boss. So actually go to the White House and start commanding. Start acting like a president, like a boss. Picking up the phone and say, hey, um, Geithner or whoever it is, the head of the Federal Reserve. We are going to start building America. We're going to start uh, offering small business loans at 0% interest. Let's do all those things that... And these small business owners, and I am one of them, to fall for the total lie that is Mitt Romney. Oh, he's going to save us. They're, they're sounding just like those liberals who, who supported Obama in 2008. Oh, Obama's going to buy me a house. Obama, Remember those people that were saying, oh, Obama's going to get me a free house? I'm going to get a free check in the mail. Fucking ignorance. And, and that's the same ignorance when you have with these supposed investors. Who say, oh, because of Obama, Jose, he's in the White House. He's not doing anything. He's just giving that money to his criminal masters in Wall Street. Yeah, yeah. That's what he's doing. Uh, trying to cover up the tracks for the Federal Reserve and all these other international foreign bankers who are robbing and looting our treasury forget all that jose i'm not going to invest in a company so you can hire people because obama is in the white house okay i have a huge problem with obama but look jose if you get a mormon bishop from a religion that hates America, who have an oath of vengeance against the American people, who practice polygamy and think that women are slaves and that blacks have no souls. We want you to support this person. And once he gets into the White House, the first day in office, magically things start to kind of fall into place, right? That's their fucking logic. It starts to magically fall into place. And then, Jose, I'm going to start investing in your pathetic little business company, whatever. That's what he basically told me. And that's the mindset of many of these stupid conservatives. It's so fucking stupid. You, who is Mitt Romney? I mean, look at the guy. He was governor of Massachusetts. One term, one term governor. <clears throat> And all the things he has done in Massachusetts, <laughs> they're all liberal, by the way. It's not even conservative. Uh, he bailed out the uh, health insurance companies in Massachusetts by having Romney Obamacare. Even though the appropriate solution to the health care problem has always been a two-step solution. Medicare for all. And production. And the other steps too, like you have to build more hospitals, more nurses. We, we need more doctors. We need to train doctors. We need to have more medical schools. We need to invest in those kinds of things. And also what you need to do is find cures for all these ailments. I mean, if you have HIV, take a pill. Or a shot, it's over. Oh, you have cancer, take a bill or take a shot, it's over. Uh, why can't we advance technologically? Uh, you know, advance our technology and our, and our medicine so that way we don't have to waste a lot of money on this. People are always thinking the wrong way. I don't know why. They're always thinking backwards in time. How do we tackle diabetes? You know, they say, oh, we have to find a, you know, we have to get people to start exercising. You know, we need to ban trans fats and sugary sodas. And, you know, now you're just getting complicated. Now you're, you're thinking like, like fucking the Flintstones. Think like a rational human being. Think like fucking Einstein would. 
Think like Benjamin Franklin would or Mark Twain. Think like an intelligent person and say, hmm, <clears throat> maybe we can avoid all that shit and just find the cure for diabetes. Oh, what about the uh, cancer problem? Oh, don't get too close to that microwave. Don't get, you know, don't go out in the sun too much. Don't be sunbathing all the time because, you know, fuck that. You know, we had to live life to the fullest. Just find the cure for cancer. Invest money in that. Have the political will to actually find the cure for it. And this whole HIV thing, oh, well, wear a condom, you know, all this. Come on. Most of us don't want to wear a condom. Even straight people would admit to that. Straight people, you, you know what I'm talking about. Just find a cure for HIV. What's the big deal? Instead, what do we do? We waste money on, on stupid, meaningless research on, 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 the, on the mating rituals of lizards. and What the fuck? This is where we have to focus on. And people are saying, oh my god, if Romney's elected... Focusing on a on a on a person on, on a Scrooge like Bishop Romney and this little doofus who's nothing but a fucking money hoarder. That's what he is. He doesn't give a shit about finding cures for illnesses or having new technology so that way things can be cheaper and more productive and and efficient and we don't have to worry about any of that shit. I mean, don't you want to live in that kind of society? I would. But we can't because people don't have the political will. They're lazy. They're politically lazy. And they think, oh, it's either Obama or Romney. Like, fuck you. I don't want Obama. I don't want Romney. I want a solution. And I have the solutions. <laughs> yeah, don't vote for me for president. Because <laughs> then I'll be shot. <laughs> They're going to try to kill me. I know that for sure. I, you know, my friend, my Republican friend, he's, you know, he's trying to convince me, you know, that, you know, he practically ruined my night, you know, in, in a way he did. Because I didn't want to, I didn't want to talk about politics at the bar. I, you know, I, when I'm at the bar, I just want to drink. I want to drink and have fun and, th you know, talk about some other shit, you know, make fun of people. <laughs> yeah, but no, we have to come up, uh, we have to talk about this shit. You know, the worst time periods of my life are always during the election year. Always. Because the people that I really like for them to win, the people that I really support, they never win. And yet people always complain. Why are things getting worse? Things are getting more expensive. Why are things getting worse? They're just getting worse and worse and worse. More people are getting laid off. Their schools are, are basically... Worth shit. Teachers are not teaching. Oh no, what's going on? There's so much pollution. There's all the, you know. There's more sick people, more cancer, more all this, more that. And, oh, you know why can't you know things are just oh and then there's more debt and then we're printing more money and where's that money going? It's basically printed and then it's gone. Somebody's stealing that money. What's going on? I tell you what's going on. You people who vote for the status quo, you people are insane. You are now, you know, faced with your insanity. You're saying, oh, we can only vote for uh, a Democrat or a Republican. Well, we've done that for how many years? For decades. And each decade, things get worse. I don't know. First we vote for Republican, then we vote for Democrat. Let's, oh, no, no. Oh, no, things are getting really bad. I went to this. Now we have to vote for a Republican. Oh, no, 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 no. He's fucking up. Now we have to get a Democrat. Oh, no, no. Don't you see a pattern here that's going on? Doesn't matter who we vote for, it's always getting fucking worse and worse and worse by the fucking minute.
And you Republicans are stupid. I mean, in every way possible. And then you selected the most stupidest candidate that can you can ever select. It, it, You know what's going to happen, right? I mean, things are going to get really so fucked. The big banks are going to rob us silly, left and right. And it's going to be under Mitten's administration. And there's going to be another recession. And uh, people are going to say, no, 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 we need a Democrat. (laughs) And nothing's gonna happen. And you Republicans, you know, if 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 the next recession, which could happen by the way, if it happens and it's gonna be probably even ten times worse, and there's gonna be people without any uh, food stamps, without anything, without it, without anything, and people say we need welfare reform, right? We don't even have welfare anymore. What what, what do we have? That the, the temporary assistance program? That's basically, you know, once you're on the verge of getting a job. And in the title, it says temporary. So it's not, you know, it's only temporary. It's a few bucks, a few uh, shillings. Oh, and then we have the uh, food stamps. Oh, really? A dollar twenty-five a meal. That's great. What can you buy for a dollar twenty-five these days? What else do you want to reform? Well, I mean, there's no, there's, there's a wick. Oh, wait a minute. I thought you Republicans were, you conservatives were pro-life. Uh, fetuses and children inside the womb, pregnant women need protein. Or else you're going to have problems, right? You're going to have all these uh, bone problems. WIC? You know, what What do they get with WIC? They get, what, uh, milk, cheese, you know, high-protein stuff? Oh, but, but no, no, no. Is that what you want to reform? You know, you, you don't want... You don't want people... Pregnant women who are low-income, who work... Work at Walmart or Chick Fil A, whatever. Pregnant women, you don't want them to get the proper nutrition and protein for their babies. But yet, you think you're pro-life. You're saying, "No, no, no! We have to protect those babies. Can't abort them." Uh, yeah, we can talk about personal responsibility and all that kind of stuff. And so, what you're saying is, if a woman is making minimum wage, four fifty an hour, working at Chick Fil A or at uh, Sam's Club, or I mean, I don't know where. Uh, what else can you work at? What else can an, an unskilled worker who has no opportunities to go to school because obviously, you know. Family's not rich. What's going to happen? Of course, that person is going to end up working no more than eight bucks an hour. How about that? And of course, you know, that would be what? How much money is that in a month? I mean, I already did this in one episode of my show. I made calculations of how much money a person, a teacher would make. Even a teacher is, is basically starving. Americans should be making more than two hundred thousand dollars a year, and I, on average, that should be the medium wage. I mean, that's my opinion. If you, if that's the medium wage, guess what? Boom. We have a, a tremendous recovery, tremendous economic growth. But we're not going to have that, are we? Everybody's going to be poor, and everybody's going to be living on the Lord's property. I mean, that's what it all is. And that's what Mittens represents. And, you know, I'm not trying to to get on my friend's case. But he doesn't seem to understand that I'm pretty much ahead of the game. I don't really sit there and just listen to talk radio or glam back or 
or Rachel Maddow and say, oh, look, uh, you know, this is how, it, no, I'm not going to sit there. I'm not a, a patsy. And he gave me the same talking points. I'm just sitting at my, you know, I'm sitting at the bar, at the bar stool. I'm just having a couple of beers. And, you know, why do I need to be exposed to this? And at the end of the night, I said, you know what? I didn't really enjoy that conversation. Because in the end, I'm at a fucking gay bar. You know? The last thing you want to do is talk about politics. Especially when you meet somebody at a gay bar. I mean, what do you want to do that for? I mean, two things you don't want to do when you meet somebody is talk about politics and religion and also ask them for a drink. You can't do that. Believe me, I had guys, all these uh, gay guys, usually young, like 21, 22 years old. They will always come up to me. And I'm like, nah, you don't want me. And, you know, in my mind, I'm like, nah, you don't want me. You want me to pay for your fucking drinks. That's what you want me to do. And I'm not going to do that. How about that? Uh, but, you know, two things I really hate at the bar. Politics, which includes religion. Because now religion is all political, by the way. I mean, that's what it is. Religion is politics. With a dash of God and spirituality. I mean, that's what it is. And all I wanted was just to hang out and have a few drinks and meet some new people. But that didn't happen today or last night. And my friend could tell that I was just sitting there listening. I wasn't really listening. I was just like, you know, by the time he was with the Glenn Beck shit, I was like, oh, God, what is he going to do? Is he going to... Is he going to take out a fucking chalkboard and start treating me like a little kid? Like how? Because that's how Glenn Beck treats his audience. Like like if they're all stupid idiots. And I think they are. The majority of the audience that watches Glenn Beck, you're all fucking idiots. But look at that guy. Taking out a chalkboard and talking to you like if you were a little kid. Look at this. This is communism. This is socialism. This is Marxism. This is Terry Vera. This is uh, Fidel Castro. And uh, Fidel Castro was involved with the... Basically, try to make fun of your uh, intelligence. And, uh, you know, I don't need to do that. I don't need a chalkboard. The fuck is that about? A fucking yeah, another fucking Mormon trying to try to pull one over the American people. I mean, look at Fox News. Look at who they have as hosts. I mean, you have Neil Cavuto. He was a Mormon, right? Uh, you had before uh, Glenn Beck, Mormon. You have uh, that high school graduate guy, Sean Hannity. Oh, yeah, that high school diploma really went well for him, right? Got a, he got, <laughs> he landed a job on Fox News. How about that with a high school diploma? Sean Hannity, Roman Catholic. Bill O'Reilly, Roman Catholic. See a pattern here? Somebody showed me a list of all the the people on Fox News, like the the. Fox and Friends, like those two douchebags, yeah, they're Roman Catholic. Uh, somebody showed me a list of all the uh, hosts on the Fox News Network. And uh, like 90% of them are either uh, Mormon or they are Catholic. And I'm like, the fuck? Catholics are... In, how many Catholics are there in America? 20% of the population is Catholic. Then 2% is what? Mormon? 22%. And now the majority of Catholics are Mexicans. 
Like if they ever watch Fox News, fuck that shit. They watch Univision <laughs> and watch their soap operas. So, uh, I don't know. But I try to enjoy my night. And really, when politics comes into the mix, it, it just it throws it off. You know, and, and I like my friend. It just, I don't like what he says sometimes. And I don't like the fact that he has to bother me. And he knows where I stand, but he's 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 either acting stupid like he doesn't know, like, wait a minute, you're gonna vote for Obama. I'm like like I don't know I, I don't know how many times I mentioned this in front of my friends, including him. I said this. I said I'm not voting for either of these fools. Here's the thing anyway, I live in Arizona. Arizona's red. Uh Arizona here a uh, Bishop Mormon has a huge advantage here in Arizona, right? It's not like it's a swing state or a, you know, battleground state. So who cares what, what I say? The majority has overwhelmed me. But if I live, let's say, in Ohio, maybe that would be different, right? <clears throat> what I do is I probably vote for the local stuff. Uh, local candidates. I met some of those uh, people. They stopped by my house. Two of them have stopped by my house, shook my hand. So had a really deep conversation with one of them. He's running for um, what was he running for? But I do recognize his name. I have to find the pamphlet. But uh, he came by my house. He's running for I think he's running for water district or something like that. But we had a deep conversation about you know the economy monetary policy and all that and he has pretty much the same sense of what i have so he's getting my vote in fact that uh that's not water district it's more than that i think it's i think it's county commission or the county supervisorship yeah it's like the the, the county board so it's like a huge thing uh and i'm not sure who, who i'm voting for sheriff Oh, yeah, that's a big thing here in Arizona, by the way. <laughs> Joe Arpaio's up for re-election. I don't know if I'm going to vote for that guy. That guy's a fucking clown. I, I don't think he's a racist, but he I think he's a fucking clown. I mean, he's out there, you know, with a posse. What the fuck is that about? You're a fucking sheriff. Act like a fucking sheriff. Don't act, act like a fucking... Like a fucking circus clown. You know? I don't know who's other. I mean, I might vote. For, there's a third party, I think, in there. I'm, I'm going to check that out. But people say, oh, no, you're not going to vote, Jose. You're not American. You're not going to be in the... Yes, I am going to vote, but I'm not going to... I'm just going to leave the presidential section blank, maybe. I don't know. But I, you're not going to have me voting for Obama. You're not going to have me voting for Bishop Romney. You're not going to have me doing that shit. I have a conscience, you know. I cannot consciously vote for somebody that... Uh, like Obama, who, who doesn't really give a shit, and he, you saw that in the debate. He just didn't give a shit. And now all the gay people, the gay writers and bloggers, are trying to come up with excuses. Like, mm, what happened to Obama? You know, oh my God, he probably had, he probably had gas. <laughs> That's one of the excuses I read online. Oh God, what a dumb, stupid, fucking excuse. Oh, he might have a, he could have had, you know, he had gas. What do you mean he had gas? What the? <laughs> Oh, he might have had gas, and that's what really uh, made him uncomfortable. I always have gas, and I just let it go. <laughs> I don't know what's the problem with these people. Oh, hey. Uh, but we have how many days to the election? I think we have, what, like three weeks left? I just want it over with. I'm not the kind of person that's very excited because I know that what I say, people just roll their eyes. You know, people don't want to listen to uh, a different independence perspective. They just want the typical talking points, liberal or conservative, doesn't matter what it is. As long as it's scripted by the controllers, you know, that's what they want. And, uh, and you want it because it's very simple. 
you know, it, it doesn't challenge your paradigm. It doesn't challenge you anyway. So if you're intellectually and politically lazy, of course, you're going to want the the easy way out. Just get the、uh, popular talking point and run with it. I don't do that. I observe things. I study things. I research. I do my homework. I find out who this fucking bishop Mitt Romney is, and I don't like what he is, and I don't like what he stands for. He's a liar and a thief and a crook. And you have another liar who, by the name of Barack Obama. So maybe if you understand that why I'm not going to vote for president, you know, well, of course. I live in a state where it's already going to be decided that our electoral votes are going to go to、uh, to Bishop Romney. So it's not like my votes can make a difference. So if, if it were in Ohio or Florida or somewhere, then yeah, I'll vote.、Uh, you know. So I don't know. And then you know the gay issue that pops up all the time. You know I, I don't really care anymore. I mean, look,、uh, we have court cases. I'm very、uh, optimistic about some of them. But later on, I'm gonna come on this show and I'm going to explain what would happen if Bishop Romney. You know, because there are a lot of gay people who are freaking out out there. If Romney wins the election. What what would we do? What would happen to the community? You know our rights and all that kind of stuff. Oh,、well, here's the solution. You know, I'm not going to give you the solution, but I do have a solution, and it's pretty、uh, revolutionary. What I have in store. So remind me, some of you, in case I forget, you know, towards the election,、uh, I won't forget. I'll make a mental note of this because I really want to give you my take. You know, it's not a really big deal in a way, as far as gay rights is concerned. That if Mittens Bishop Romney、uh, wins the presidency,、um, I mean, look, he was governor doing the、uh, whole gay marriage thing in Massachusetts. So, <laughs> what does that tell you? Yeah, there's something towards. There's something about this guy that makes courts rule in favor of gay marriage. But I have a solution,、uh, and it's a good solution. And you know, it's like、uh, you know. But you'll hear about it. It's mostly、e、economical because that's where our, our rights are. Our you know, gay rights are basically economic rights, in many ways. So, you know, we could do that.、Uh, anyway, but my friend really just—he、uh, drains me. And、uh, I just had to get. I almost got drunk because I just wanted to just keep drinking so that way he'll know that hey, Jose is not really in, you know, and I wasn't in the mood. I really wasn't. I mean, you know, I come here on the show. I talk about politics. I write my blog sometimes about. I don't want to really deal with it anymore. I mean, I made up my mind already. And he is trying to, you know,、uh, recruit people. He's trying to get my other friends to vote for Romney. You're in, 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 my other friends are very liberal, by the way. I mean, they're hardcore Obama supporters. I don't know how they, you know, how are, are they going to vote for this guy?、And、especially what happened with the whole Republican platform, how they,、uh, you know, how, how they really went anti-gay this time. Basically, Tony Perkins, the CIA operative at the、uh, Family Research Council, he basically wrote the whole thing. I mean that's what really happened there, so ah、oh, God, I think I need another drink. I think I do. <laughs>